under the process of forgetting and memory, we have the decay theory. But before we dive into the discussion, let me read a quote from William James, the father of American psychology. He stated that in the practical use of our intellect, forgetting is as important as remembering. There are plenty of times when forgetting makes sense in our daily life. And most of us would agree that a good memory means being able to remember lots of events for a very long time. But it turns out that forgetting things is just important as remembering them because it stops the mind getting cluttered with useless information. My name is Christian Caperas and this is Decay Theory. The term decay theory was first coined by Edward Thorndike in his book The Psychology of Learning in 1914. But let's get more history of this theory. Roll back in 1855, Hermann Ebbinghaus was in the prime of his life. He was busy pioneering an experimental study of memory. His rigorous research method needed only one subject, himself. Hermann got to work testing his memory and plotting the results. His findings showed just how rapid the information sips out of our brain. Within a month, he had forgotten 90% of everything he originally learned. His findings have since been backed up by neuroscientists. Our brain operates as strict use it or lose it policy when it comes to information they store. The decay theory states that when something new is learned, a neurochemical memory trace is formed. But the disuse of this trace will lead to memory decay, which will ultimately cause retrieval failure. This process begins almost immediately if the information is not used. For example, sometimes we forget a person's name even though we have just met them. Information is therefore less available for later retrieval as time passes. So basically, this theory proposes that memories fade to the mere passage of time. But there are problems with this theory. First, it is difficult to demonstrate that time alone is responsible for declines in recall. Another problem is it doesn't account for why some memories fade quickly while others linger. Simply, it cannot entirely explain lapses in long-term memory. The decay theory along with interference theory are two suggested reasons why people forget. That's it for my discussion. Thank you for listening.